when we say leader, if one wants to be a leader, in some way he has to transform himself in the sense. The essential concern of any individual person to start with is, what about me, my survival, my well-being? So if one has to become a leader, he has to transform this into a larger possibility. What was essentially individual concern becomes a little larger concern in some sense. What is being looked forward to from a leader is, he should be able to see things that other people are not able to see. He need not be a superhuman being, he need not know everything. Most leaders don't know much but they are able to see certain things that other people are missing and they are able to put together to a common purpose. They are able to put people together for a certain common purpose that makes them leaders. Once you are in the position of leadership, every thought that you generate, every emotion that you generate, every action that you perform has impact on many, many people, maybe a few hundred people, thousand people or millions of people depending upon what type of leadership you are in. So every thought, every emotion, every action of a leader has an impact on many, many lives. When this is so, it is extremely important that one who wishes to be a leader in some way focuses upon how he is within himself too, not just about how he performs in the world. Because no human being is doing anything that he is not himself in some way. So enhancing this being the way he is, evolving this being the way he is, transforming this being the way he is, is a very important part of leadership. Learning the tricks of management, learning the tricks of manipulating or inspiring people, is another thing. But the most important thing is, learning the art of evolving this being is very, very important because everything that being this… as your leadership becomes of greater scope and greater possibility, every thought that you generate in your mind has an impact on people around you. So attending to this person is very, very important. If… if we think, the work that we are doing is important. It is most important that you should work upon yourself first because you cannot produce anything that other than what you really are. You will only produce who you are in so many different ways. Who you are, what your mind is, what your emotions are, how you are right now will manifest in every action that you perform in the world. And once you have moved to a position of responsibility, that is having a huge impact on many, many lives. So it would be responsible for a leader not to be constantly striving to transform himself first. And essentially, leadership also means either you're transforming lives of people directly or you're transforming situations which will in turn lead to transformation of life for other people. So transformation and leadership cannot be separated. Leadership is transformative. But I know we have been… we have gotten used to live in leadership of stagnation. But that's not leadership because some people become leaders in moments of strife, when there is large-scale injustice, suddenly a human being starts thinking beyond his own well-being. His involvement becomes beyond his own personal needs and he tends to become a leader sometimes. Or sometimes individual ambitions will propel someone to become a leader. Or sometimes leadership happens by default, you having been born in the right family or the wrong family, whichever way you want to look at it 
<laughs> but essentially if one wants to evolve into a natural leader, because leadership is not assertion of yourself, the leadership is a way of knowing the art of fulfilling everybody's aspirations. Leadership is the art of making people understand essentially deep down all our aspirations are same. Whether you are leading a company or a community or a city or a country, essentially it is about making people realize somewhere deep down all our aspirations are same. The first time I was at the economic forum, people looked at me very resentfully. They said, what is a mystic doing at an economic conference? So I thought, uh, let me speak their own language. So I asked, what do you do, what's your business? This person said, uh, well, I'm working for Lenovo. We are the second largest computer manufacturers and we do this, this, this. I said, see, you are doing computers. I pointed out at one man who was in… who was a General Motors person and I said, see, he's making cars. Somebody there is making safety pin, it doesn't matter whether you're making computer, car, safety pin or spacecraft, what is the fundamental business? He said, what? My business is computer. I said, your business is not computer. The fundamental business is human well-being, isn't it? That's the reason why you're making… Com you might have forgotten why you're making a computer. Essentially, you're manufacturing computer to make human life better, isn't it? Somebody is manufacturing a safety pin to make human life better. So essential business is human well-being and that's my business too. So that's why I'm here <laughs> Everybody's business is human well-being. It is just that it is only the scale and scope which is different from person to person. One person thinks, Human well-being means just my well-being. My individual well-being is human well-being, I don't care what happens to somebody. For another person, human well-being means him and his family. For another person, human well-being means him and his community. For another person, it's him and his country. For another person, it's the whole world. Only in scale, human beings can be different. Otherwise, every human being's aspiration is human well-being, isn't it so? Yes? Is there somebody who is not involved in human well-being? Only the scale is different, isn't it? So if your scale is larger than individual well-being, then you are a leader. So if it is larger because you think… because of your ambition, it will be stressful. If you have taken this on because your family pushed you into it, it will be very stressful. You will become a natural leader. L being a leader is not certain position, it is just a certain capability and fulfillment of our aspirations. In the sense, nobody can become a leader without a certain spiritual element in him. No, 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 don't… don't… don't get like that. When I say spiritual, I am not talking about you do joining some religion or joining up with some group. Essentially, spiritual process means expanding the horizons of your perception and experience of life and oneself. In some way, your perception of life has enlarged itself beyond self-preservation. You are thinking not just about this being well, you are thinking of making things happen for lots of people, that makes you into a leader. So this can happen out of your thought or this can happen out of necessity of situations in which you exist or this can happen because your perception has truly expanded. When I say perception has expanded, shall we do an experiment with you? Can I do an experiment with you? Yes. Take your right hand, touch your left hand and see. Is that you? Is this you? Touch the chair in which you're sitting. Is that you? How do you know this? What is the basis 
of your experience which tells you this is me, this is not me. Hmm? Don't, don't sit there like yogis, I am the yogi. I'm sorry? No, no, no. <laughs> what is it that tells you this is me and this is not me? You're reading lots of nonsense. <laughs> Just tell me what tells you this is not me? What tells you this is me? Sensation, isn't it? Here there is sensation, here there is no sensation, isn't it so? Yes? So, it is your sensation which determines what is you and what is not you. It is the boundary of sensation. Whatever is within the boundaries of your sensation is you. Whatever is outside the boundaries of your sensation is not you. Is that the definition of yourself? Yes? Technically. So what is within this is you, if it's outside of this, this is not you. There is water here, not reachable, okay. There is water in this, is this you? No. If you drink it, does it become you? What happened? What was outside the boundaries of your sensation, got included into the boundaries of sensation, suddenly it's you. How did you get these cages that you're carrying around? Were you born like this? What you call as myself right now is all over the planet, isn't it so? Hmm? Are you eating only Marathi food or are you eating? No, I'm just saying it's all over Maharashtra or all over the planet. I don't know where all you picked up the stuff. So what you call as myself, was a piece of earth at one time. Now you go about, this is me. What has happened? You just took a piece of earth and included it into the boundaries of your sensation, now this is you. Now do I have to tell you, please take care of your little finger, this should be taken care of, don't harm it, don't cut it, don't bite it off, should I have to tell you? No. So now, your boundaries of sensation are not fixed. Have you at any time been so joyful, so exuberantly joyful that tears came to you? So if you've been that joyful, at that moment if you take your hands and keep it eight, nine inches over your body, right here you will feel sensations. Have you noticed this ever? You do one thing, you just do like this and hold it three, four inches away. Do you notice sensations? Yes? If you become very happy, just try this, there will be a transaction between these two hands. This will happen to you. Did you ever hold somebody's hand and sit and you were in love? Just holding hands felt like two people have become one, isn't it? This is because only if you're feeling exuberant, otherwise holding hands is a dirty thing, it sweats and you know it's irritating and everything. Only if you are feeling very exuberant, now, it's good because the sensation, the boundaries of sensation have expanded. Sensory body has an existence of its own. Today medically they can prove this to you. If you have not had this kind of fabulous experiences, then we'll have to do something horrible to you. Suppose we chop off your leg. Even if your physical leg is gone, the sensory leg will be still in place for a certain period of time. You know this. It's a… it's a medical fact today. So sensory body has a presence of its own beyond the physical body and this sensory body expands when your life energies are exuberant and contracts when your life energies are depressed or suppressed. This could have happened to you, you are very worried and depressed about something, somebody comes and taps you on the shoulder, you can't feel it. Have you noticed this? Have you noticed this? Because when you are in a depressed state, your sensory body contracts. When you're in an exuberant state, it expands. If you consciously crank up your life energies to a certain level of exuberance, if you sit here, suppose your sensory body became as large as this hall, now 
you would experience all this as a part of yourself. If you experience these people, as you experience the five fingers of your hand, because what is within these five fingers was also outside some time ago, isn't it? Yes? This is slowly you accumulated into the boundaries of sensation. It was outside and you included it into the boundaries of sensation, now you experience this as myself. Suppose you stretched your boundary of sensation to this whole hall, after that, do I have to tell you, be good to this person, don't harm that person, don't kill that person? Do I have to t teach you morality? Would you naturally do what best you can do for all this life around you? Then you are a natural leader. That's what a leader is supposed to be. Either you are manipulating yourself and your leader, which is very stressful, or because you experience everything as yourself, you do the best you can do according to your capability. Each individual can function only to the limits of his capability, isn't it? And your capabilities are at their best. This can be… there is substantial medical evidence and scientific evidence for this. Your body and your brain will function at its best only when you're exuberant, when you're joyful, when you're ecstatic, your whole system functions at its best. Have you noticed this yourself? Ha haven't you noticed this experientially? When you're peaceful and joyful, is your body and brain functioning at its best? A man went to the neurologist and asked him, Doctor, how long can a man live without a brain? The neurologist looked at him and asked, how old are you? Now when I talk about exuberance of experience, where is the basis of your experience, first of all? Can you see me at least? Those of you are not talking to me, can you see me? Yes. Tell me where am I? You can't tell me, okay, you're not on talking terms. Can you show me where I am? Please use your hands. Where am I? Oh, you got it totally wrong. Although you're completely off the mark. You know, I'm a mystic. <laughs> this light is falling upon me, reflecting, going through your lenses, inverted image in the retina. Have you heard the whole story? So where do you see me right now? Within yourself. Where do you hear me right now? Within yourself. Where have you seen the whole world? Within yourself. Have you ever experienced anything outside of yourself? Have you ever experienced anything outside of yourself? Right now, if I touch this chair, my sensations are not of the chair, my sensations are only of my body, isn't it? Yes or no? You have never experienced anything outside of yourself, please see. Everything that you know is only the way your sense organs are projecting things within you, isn't it? Sun is setting right now outside, but we are turning lights on here because for us this is darkness. But there is a whole host of life on the planet. The sun sets, they all come alive. Actually there are more life on the planet which are nocturnal. Yes? I am not talking about the Bombay There is more life on the planet which comes alive in the night than in the day, yes? So suppose you sit with an owl and start an argument, which is light, which is darkness, where would it get you? Endless argument? Who is right, you or the owl? Both? Oh. Both means, uh, if you're saying both, either you're working for the diplomatic core <laughs> or you may have a successful marriage. <laughs> In these two areas, you must learn to say both, both, both to everything. <laughs> Otherwise, you can't survive these two things. <laughs> I'm asking which is light, what you see is light or what the owl sees is light. See, both of us may be wrong. One of us may be wrong, but both of us cannot be right, isn't it? 
Yes? So your sense perception right now is just enough for survival, but everything that you experience is happening within you. The very seat of your experience is within you. When this is so, should you not determine the nature of your experience? The world outside will happen the way you want it only to some extent, never hundred percent the way you want it, yes? Never will and I'm happy it is so. Because if the world happened completely the way you want it, where do I go? <laughs> I'm glad it's not happening your way, isn't it so? It happens to some extent your way, some extent my way, some extent somebody else's way. It's okay, that's the way the world should be. But at least this one person should happen hundred percent the way I want him, isn't it? Yes? But right now this is the problem. This one is not happening. This body is not taking instructions from you. This mind is not taking instructions from you. If your mind was ta were taking instructions from you, would you keep it joyful or miserable? Pleasant or unpleasant? Pleasant for sure. If you were joyful, your sensory body would be all over the place. There would be a deep sense of inclusiveness. Once your experience of life is inclusive, without being elected, you are a leader. Without being appointed, you are a leader. Don't think whoever is appointed is always the leader. There are all kinds of leaders all over the place who are managing things and taking things in their own way, isn't it? Yes or no? Because of their sense of inclusiveness. Wherever there's inclusiveness, people will look for guidance in that direction, isn't it so? Yes? Whoever reverberates with you, you look for guidance in that direction, not to the appointed person up there, isn't it? So, there is a certain possibility within the human being which has been left unexplored by most of the humanity. Can I tell you my own story, is it okay? You shouldn't sleep off, okay? Because once upon a time if I start, most people think it's bedtime has come. This is not one once upon a time story. I know I look ancient enough, but it's not a once upon a time thing. Some time ago. <laughs> when I was just three, four years of age, one thing that I realized was that I did not know anything. I was so utterly, absolutely ignorant about everything, this came to my awareness. So if somebody gives me a glass of water, I will just be staring at this for three, four hours at a stretch. Somebody gives me a dry leaf, I'll be looking at it for hours. If I sit up in the bed, I'll be just staring at nothingness for the whole night. To a point <laughs> where uh, my father, who happens to be a physician, started thinking I need psychiatric evaluation. He got really worried. This boy just stares without blinking his eyes something wrong with him, I am like this. I am looking at something because I don't know anything, I have to pay attention to every small thing. Everybody around me going about blissfully, they know everything. I am asking you, even today, do you really know what this water is? Do you really know? I am asking, are you just, oh water, H2O? Do you know what is H? Hydrogen. Do you know what's damn hydrogen? Atom, this much. Do you know what that is? We have still not deciphered a single atom in the existence. Yes or no? Yes? With all the scientific exploration, we still do not know the nature of a single subatomic particle in the existence yet. Yes, is that a fact? So I'm just staring at everything like this and people think I need psychiatric evaluation. And they send me to school, I didn't go there too often. I went whenever it was necessary <laughs> and uh, I go and I just… somebody is talking, the teachers, I'm just staring at them. Initially I hear the words and understand the meaning. After some time I realized they're only making noises. 
it is me who is making up the meanings. See, right now, I'm making only noises. You assume you know English language and you are making up the meanings, isn't it? If you do not know English language, I'm just making noises, am not I? So I stopped making meanings, just started looking at the teacher. Suddenly it was very amusing. Then with a big grin on my face, I'm staring at them, which was very irritating for the teachers. <laughs> I'm staring without blinking because I'm absorbing all the sounds but without meanings. Don't do that to me now, okay? <laughs> then as I stared and stared, see, as I paid more and more attention to everything, everything around me started transforming itself, changing itself in such a dramatic way. After some time I was not even hearing the sound, I was just seeing people doing acts. And as I paid attention, I found that even this human form just evaporated from my vision and I would see hazy ghost-like figures going all over the place. And I'm completely amused with a big grin on my face, I'm like this. People think I'm going nuts. So I'm looking at the teacher, I know him through and through, but I don't know what the hell he's talking about. One day this happened, I remember this situation <laughs> very well because about four months ago, this school invited me to speak at their alumni meeting. I said, please, not me, because I was not just not a good student, I was not even a student. Why do you want me? They said, no, 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 we want you. I said, why? They said, our school has produced scientists, our school has produced great managers, our school, our school has produced test cricketers, but you are the only mystic, so you have to come. <laughs> so I went there for this alumni meeting and uh, the, all the buildings are same and you know, all my memories came back to me. And uh, I thought, see this classroom, in this classroom a certain situation happened which changed my life in many ways. On that particular day, this teacher was talking about something, whatever, and as usual I was staring, looking through him, not listening to what he is saying. And he is trying to get some response from me, asking me all kinds of things, provoking me, but I am fully… I am fully attentive, I am not ignoring him. I am paying more attention than anybody has ever paid him in his life. I'm paying that kind of attention to him. But I, I cannot… I cannot hear what he is saying. Then after trying this for more than thirty, forty minutes, he said, you must either be divine or you must be the devil. I think you are the later <laughs> So this did not… I did not feel insulted or abused. This set off… this set off a whole host of questions within me. Am I the divine? Am I the devil? Am I human? Am I alien? What the hell am I? Because anyway I did not know. So this set off a completely different line of thought within me, endless amount. What the hell am I? What is the nature of this? And uh, one day I happened to be eating something, I was into my adolescence at that time, I just ate a morsel of food. I knew this intellectually, I have studied a little bit of science and whatever by then, but suddenly this food exploded within me. See, you eat something, you eat a piece of bread or rice or let's see a banana, if you eat this, what was something which was not you? If you eat it, it becomes you, isn't it? Yes? All this stuff was not you some time ago, this is not you right now. But if you put it inside, it actually becomes you. It is not an idea. It is a living experience that it becomes you, isn't it? So when I ate and I closed my eyes, it just exploded within me, this food, that it is actually becoming a part of me. Something which was on my plate, which was not me, is actually becoming me. It's a… F it's a phenomena beyond explanation. It is a phenomena beyond logical understanding. It is the greatest thing that's happening, that you can convert a banana into a human being. It's not a simple thing. You can make a piece of bread into a human being, not a simple thing, isn't it? So suddenly I realized, 
there is an innate intelligence and capability here which can make a piece of bread into a human being. When I say human being, human being as a mechanism, if you look at it, this is the most sophisticated mechanism on the planet, isn't it? Most complex and most sophisticated, highest level of electronics, mechanics, electricals, everything. Isn't it so? Yes or no? Have you seen a better machine than this? Just a piece of bread within a few hours becomes such a phenomenal machine. So suddenly I shifted my life from staring to sitting with my eyes closed. I was staring hours on end. Now I sat with my eyes closed some days for hours, sometimes for days. Now suddenly people around me, people who are thinking that I need psychiatric evaluation, they started thinking, oh, he is a yogi, see. But I was still doing the same thing. Instead of staring at somebody, I was staring at myself. I was not doing anything different, I was still paying attention, that's all I was doing. All the time I was paying attention, it is just a change the direction of paying attention and suddenly from a nutcase to a yogi. <laughs> now there is this intrin intrinsic intelligence and capability in every being right here, isn't it? Yes? If you could only access, the very source of creation is right here. If you could only touch it, you would be phenomenally capable, isn't it? You don't have to learn leadership somewhere, you will be a natural leader because the very source of creation, that which makes life is here within you, trapped, he cannot get away. Please look at this. If you only strive to make the necessary contact with this, if you find access to this, leadership is natural. Leadership is not about you asserting yourself over somebody, it is about being able to harness everybody's aspirations and make it happen. People should not even feel there is a leader around, that's when you're a real leader, isn't it? If people constantly feel the presence of a leader, he's a tyrant most probably. Yes or no? People should not even feel this place is managed. It looks like no, nobody is managing it but everything is happening the way it should happen. That is leadership, isn't it? Yes? See, right now, the nature of creation is such that we can argue there is no creator because it's so perfect. If every day it was breaking down, then we would every day know and curse the one who creates this. Because creation is happening in such perfection, we can forget about the source of creation, isn't it? That's true management, isn't it so? That nobody feels the presence of the manager. Nobody feels the presence of the leader, but everything is in place. That is when you're a great leader and that will only happen only when there's a deep sense of inclusiveness of everything around you. Inclusiveness not as an idea, but inclusiveness as an experience. Oh, is such a thing possible? Well, once again, modern science is telling you, if you sit here right now, this moment, as you're sitting here right now, every subatomic particle in your body right now is in constant transaction with the rest of the cosmos. This is a reality that's happening. So the only problem is you're not experiencing that reality. If you're experiencing that reality, there would be a deep sense of inclusiveness. When there is inclusiveness, when you feel everything as myself, nobody has to teach you integrity, nobody has to teach you morality, nobody has to teach you what's right and wrong. Nobody has to teach you what's right and wrong towards yourself, isn't it? Only with reference to the other there is a problem. So spiritual process means you have eliminated the other. There is no other for you in this world, there's only you. When there's only you, there's absolutely no problem. You'll do the best that you can do and that's all there is with life. That's all there is with life, isn't it? Have you fully expanded yourself? Everything that you are, has it been used or not? Whether you can perform like somebody else or not is not the question. The question is, have you used this being fully for whatever it is? And that will only happen if your experience of life is constantly pleasant. 
I will tell you this, there is medical evidence to prove this today. If you maintain twenty-four hours of utter pleasantness, before that let me ask you a question. Unfortunately, almost the whole population on the planet will come with a negative answer. How many of you have had one day in your life, that is one twenty-four hour segment in your life, where you spend twenty-four hours without a moment of irritation, agitation, anxiety, unhappiness, anger, nothing. You went through twenty-four hours blissfully. Very few people can say yes to this unfortunately. See, if one day did not happen the way you want it, that's different. If not even one day happened the way you want it, you are not in the position of leadership, even with this one, isn't it? Yes? Even twenty-four hours in these many years, if it did not happen exactly the way you want it, obviously you are not in control. You are happening by accident. If your own body and your own brain is not taking instructions from you, why the hell should thousand people or ten thousand people take instructions from you, I'm asking? Why should they take it? Now, being a leader is going to be phenomenally stressful because you are trying to manipulate situations to make them happen. You do this much to yourself, that your mind and your body will do what you want it to do. You will see, suddenly working with the world is such an effortless process. Because once your mind is taking instructions from you, there is no such thing as unpleasantness within you. There is no such thing as stress within you. There is no such thing as anxiety within you. Yes? You are anxious, you are stressful, not because your job is stressful, simply because you do not know how to manage your systems, isn't it? Yes? You do not know how to manage the human system, that is the whole problem. Now, uh, if there is one thing, Sadhguru, tell us one thing that will make me into a good leader. Shall I tell you a story? I'll tell you a donkey story. There was an old farmer who had an old ass or a donkey with him. One day this ass, being an ass, it went and fell into an open well. And this well was dry, no water, thirty feet deep. He's unable to climb up, so he's crying piteously. So the farmer went and looked. This is an old donkey on the verge of retirement. A retired ass nobody wants. A working ass, all right, they'll bear with it. Retired ass, who wants? He thought, this whole effort of pulling this ass up and the expense of pulling it up, not worth it. Well is dry, no good well, no good ass. So he called his neighbors and said, let's fill up the well, two jobs in one shot. You have closed the unused well and you have buried the retired donkey. So they all started shoveling in earth, wanting to bury this ass alive. So you have no value for a retired ass, but ass doesn't think so. So it started crying piteously, looking for some compassion somewhere, but all of them ruthlessly shoveling earth. After some time, this ass started doing something. Every time a shovel full of earth fell on its back, it shook it off and took an upward step. People looked at it in amazement, wow, what a smart ass! <laughs> this is a really smart ass. And as they showered more and more earth, every time he shook it off and took one more step, one more step, one more step, and then he came out. And by now, the old farmer was full of admiration for his great smart ass, and he wanted to hug and fondle the ass. The ass promptly turned around and kicked him in the face. So the moral of the story is, if you want to be a leader, one thing that you don't do is, don't spend your life trying to cover your ass. 
it will turn around and kick you in the face one day. Because what people expect you from a leader is that first of all he is straight. People don't appreciate you manipulating them. People appreciate that first of all you are straight. You don't have to be brilliant to be a leader. You don't have to be a genius to be a leader. You don't have to be a superhuman to be a leader. You are straight, your integrity is always there and you have some vision. You have some insight into a few things that makes you into a leader. When you are truly inclusive, you'll naturally have an insight about everything. And then you gather, people, right kind of people will naturally, naturally gather around you when they see a certain level of integrity in you and things will happen according to your capability, of course. You can never equate people's capabilities. People are come with different capabilities, it's fine. But the question is just this, are you able to use yourself to the fullest extent or no? If you yourself are an issue, say, so please see, you yourself are an issue on a daily basis. When you are an issue, you cannot handle issues on the outside. So if you are… if you make yourself like this, that this is not an issue anymore. Now, you can attend to the outside issues to the best of your capability and your leadership will happen effortlessly without being stressful, without being stressful to you or to anybody for that matter transformative leadership. If you have questions, please. Any kind of question? Sadhguru, why is it that today in the name of leadership we see so much of insecurity among leaders? Subordinates who look upon leaders today feel awfully insecure even more. This, these brilliant people who are assisting the leader, they are like small pieces in the jigsaw. By themselves they are nothing. There needs to be a fulcrum who holds these people together, otherwise by themselves they can do nothing. If there wasn't a leader, these people could never be harnessed and they would never find expression to their intelligence. Because they may have certain talent, but they don't have leadership. So, somebody is being paid more only because… not because he's brilliant, because he is able to harness brilliance. Brilliance which cannot be harnessed, what's the use of that? It's a lot of trouble actually, no? Intelligence which is not harnessed is a lot of trouble, isn't it? So a leader may not be the same IQ as he is the so-called brilliant man, but he is able to manage all these IQs that's his capability. He gets paid for that. You get paid for your IQ. So anyway, above all, your life, the quality of your life does not necessarily depend upon how much you're paid. I'm not saying you should ignore that. Yes, that is a factor. How much money you get, how much wealth you make in your life determines the comfort of your life, never determines the quality of your life, yes? It gives you certain access, it gives you certain comfort, it facilitates a few things around, but essentially the quality of your life is in how joyfully you're creating what you're creating, isn't it? If you are absolutely giving yourself and if you… if you're brilliant as one claims to be, and if you're really making things happen to the best of your ability, in many ways you become indispensable for any group of people, isn't it? So instead of thinking of increment, I think people should focus on how to become indispensable. That people can't believe that without you this situation can work. It will work anyway. Tomorrow morning if I fall dead or you fall dead, the world will go on fine. Don't have any illusions about that. But People should believe that without him how to live, how to make this work. If people get such feeling, then you will be substantially rewarded. But the true reward is in the joy of doing what you're doing, not in what you get at the end of the month, isn't it? What you get at the end of the month facilitates a few things, 
maybe determines the kind of house you live in, determines the kind of car you drive. But how joyful you drive the car that it doesn't come from that, isn't it? How joyful you live in this house is not determined by that. So your quality of life is the way you experience it, not what you have, where you are. So please, once you said this, that your quality of life is determined, anyway you are joyful by your own nature, you will function at your best and your capabilities will be rewarded. Today or tomorrow it has to be rewarded. Sometimes there may be some slowdown, sometimes maybe you have to make a little noise and make them know that you are not there. Because it's a large picture, somebody may not notice you. But the important thing is, in your life, the important thing is, are you enjoying the process of life or are you cribbing through your life? This is most important, isn't it? Yes? Uh, I guess my question is, uh, you know, where do we get started and what is the path? Uh, so that, uh, you know, again, this doesn't you know, become a subconscious uh, you know, experience and then we again wait for you know, this kind of thing to happen. What, what are the practical you know, things that uh, you know, we can do so that we kind of don't leave this session saying, okay, it was another great talk but I don't really know what do I need to do so at least uh, no, I know I've, I'm trying to make the effort. You want some tips? <laughs> People have given all kinds of tips and they have not worked, isn't it? People have read all kinds of books and they work for a certain period of time, after that they don't work, isn't it? Because you're trying to imbibe inclusiveness from outside, no. Inclusiveness is the nature of life, that's what I said. It is not about you trying to change yourself, it is about realizing the nature of your existence. It is not about changing realities, it is just about realizing the nature of reality. The nature of reality is right now like this. I hate this person, I want to scratch his eyeballs out. But unknowingly what he exhales, I inhale, what I exhale, he inhales, no problem. Yes? Yes, you are ex you're inhaling what your mother-in-law exhales, your enemy exhales, your boss exhales, you, whether you like it or not, isn't it? Yes or no? What Pakistanis exhale, you are inhaling, what you are exhaling, they are inhaling depending upon which way the wind is blowing, isn't it? Yes or no? No way, we will not breathe what Pakistanis breathe. You can't help it <laughs> So life is inclusive, only your mind is exclusive, you understand? Mind is made like this because this part of the mind, which is the logical structure of your mind, can only cater to your survival process. For survival you have to be exclusive, please understand this. Now, I must understand, that the food should go here for me to survive, otherwise I'll throw it all over the place in my inclusiveness. <laughs> survival, the process of survival cannot function unless the exclusiveness is manifest. So creation is beautifully made that certain aspects of you are absolutely inclusive, certain aspects of you are utterly exclusive and that's how it should be. So this is not a question of you recreating your life, this is a question of you realizing your life. If you have to realize something, at least first of all you must start paying attention to it, isn't it? You are not paying any attention to… attention to life, you are just busy creating your own world in your mind, isn't it? Please see, you are not living your life, most of the time you are thinking about life, isn't it so? Yes or no? What you call as my life right now is your thought, your emotion, your opinion, your prejudice, this is what you call as life. This is not life, this is just a psychological process. Life is an existential process, isn't it? Is life a reality or is it just a dream? But what's happening in your mind? Is it a reality or is it just a dream? It's just a dream. What happens in your mind is a dream. So if you understand this, you can make your dream any way you want. I'm not saying don't dream, at least you must be having w the kind of dreams that you want, isn't it? But 
you're not having the kind of dreams you want. That is why stress, that is why anxiety, that is why fear, that is why hatred, that is why all forms of unpleasantness, isn't it? If your dream was happening the way you want it, even if your life was not happening the way you want it, if your dream was happening the way you want it, you would be at least joyful. Maybe starved, but still you would be joyful. Maybe fired from your job, still joyful, yes? Because when you are in the job, you are complaining about the job. If you get fired, you get complaining about the beach. What do people do in Mumbai? If they get fired, do they go to the beach at least? No, they go to the bar <laughs> Okay. <laughs> so, what do I do so that it just doesn't become a thought? First and foremost thing is, when I started this with myself, it was everything was like a fantastic discovery for me and I started working towards creating this and making this happen. This whole technology of how to make this happen the way I want it. Then I discovered that I was a fool who was striving… trying to reinvent the wheel. Any number of people for thousands of years have known this, but I thought I arrived at it. <laughs> for me it was like that because for me, I had no spiritual teaching, I had no guidance, I had no nothing. Suddenly this burst upon me and I think this is it, it's the first time Eureka. But after some time I realized thousands of people, millions of people for thousands of generations have known this. So there is a whole knowledge about that. It is just that it needs to be approached. If you want to start off on an inner journey, when I say inner journey, I want you to shave it off of all the traditional notions that you have about it. Right now, you understand your experience of life is limited to what's happening within you. Based on that, if you want to explore this possibility of what this being is and know this experientially, to turn your attention from believing that you're looking outside and knowing that you're only looking within, if you dedicate twenty-eight to thirty hours of life, a focused time if you give me, we can set up an instrument for you, a subjective instrument within yourself, which will give you this access. But at least that much is needed. Still technology is at that level. Someday if I, if I arrive at a technology where it can be done in a moment, we'll do it. I can do it in a moment if you are a very simple human being. But now you're educated, we take thirty hours with education <laughs> Thank you very much for being here.